Well, when I was an undergraduate, I spent, which was actually probably more years ago than I care to admit, but I spent a bit too much of my free time playing games. Uh, my, f my favorite type of games were actually cooperative storytelling games. And there was one in particular that really captured my imagination. It was called The Legend of the Five Rings. And it was set in a world that was based heavily on Japanese and Chinese mythology and folklore. The game revolved around the exploits of samurai, primarily. And it served as my introduction to some of the most intriguing aspects of historical Japanese culture. Last semester, as Dr. Kostler was saying, um, I was writing a research paper on the influences of Zen Buddhism on the Japanese samurai caste. Uh, while doing so, I actually discovered that this game that I had enjoyed as an undergraduate uh, was actually I had drawn a great deal of inspiration and even taken its name from a book written by a quite famous samurai named Miyamoto Musashi. The book itself, The Book of Five Rings, was actually the last of several written by Musashi over the course of his life. This discovery naturally had a major impact on the direction of my paper, and I couldn't resist uh, the temptation to include a section about Musashi and his work in the paper itself. Uh, for my presentation today, I'm going to talk about the influences of Buddhism on Musashi's final work, focusing primarily on the structure and the content of the Book of Five Rings. <coughs> Now, the figure of the samurai, which is pretty much the quintessential medieval Japanese warrior, has in modern times been elevated to, to a somewhat mythic status, often portrayed as a warrior poet, a Zen master, an artist, and sometimes even approaching a superhero. Uh, the samurai has become a figure that is arguably more iconic than any other medieval warrior throughout history. But what is it about the samurai that elevates them to this status? What is the foundation of the samurai's almost supernatural appeal? These are some of the questions that I was attempting to answer in my paper, and they're very central to an examination of Musashi's work. The core of the samurai's mystique is the practice of Zen Buddhism. The inherent contradictions of a warrior class Adopting the tenets of a religion of nonviolence proved to be fertile ground for the growth of samurai philosophers, artists, and poets. Yamoto Musashi was to become one of the most famous of these samurai philosophers, penning his final work, The Book of Five Rings, at about the age of 60, after retiring from his life as a wandering swordsman to spend the rest of his days in meditation. Now, the clearest example of Buddhism's influence on Miyamoto's final work can be found in the structure of the book itself. As the title suggests, the Book of Five Rings is actually broken into five smaller parts, each one originally written as a separate scroll. These books are in order the Ground Book, the Water Book, the Fire Book, the Wind Book, and the Book of the Void. But these books are far from independent from each other. Each one of them references and relies upon the others in order to form a coherent whole. William Scott Wilson, who was the author of The Lone Samurai, The Life of Miyamoto Musashi, and also one of the translators of a recent edition of The Book of Five Rings, explained the structure in careful detail, and he revealed a lot of its links to esoteric Buddhist beliefs and practices. Wilson tells us that in Japan, the cosmic Buddha is often represented by a five-tiered stone pagoda called a gorinto, or a tower of five rings. Wilson describes the construction of these towers in a lot of detail. There's a square stone at the bottom representing the earth element, or stability, the fundamental nature of all things. Next, there's a round stone that represents the water element, or pendant permeation and vacuity. Then the triangular stone represents the fire element, which is purity and perfect activity. A crescent-shaped stone represents the wind element, or growth and perfect awareness. And at the top, a stone in the shape of a jewel represents the void element, or space. The parallels between this system and the structure and title of Miyamoto's book seem fairly obvious. 
but one of the questions that I wanted to attempt to answer was what was the purpose behind this connection? No doubt the structure of the book itself would have been clear to any samurai of Miyamoto's era. The five books taken together would form a unified whole that paralleled the unity of the cosmic Buddha of Vairokana, signaling to the reader that what was contained within was the entire truth, or true way, of Musashi's techniques. The five-tiered structure of Musashi's final work suggests a stratified process of continual learning and experience, while also demanding that the student understand the entire work as a whole in order to achieve perfection of the art. So here we have to begin to examine the actual content of the Book of Five Rings. His purpose in writing this book is actually fairly clear, which is not always the case when we're dealing with literature. The author gives us his intent in the opening words of his introduction to the book. He says, quite simply, I have been many years training in the way of strategy, and now I think I will explain it in writing for the first time. His purpose was to instruct others, to offer guidance towards the perfection of his martial art. So how does he go about this instruction? And in what ways does the content of the Book of Five Rings reflect the influence of Zen Buddhism on Musashi's thinking? Before those questions can be answered, we really need to take a moment for a brief summary of the topics of each of the five books. The Earth chapter is, according to Musashi, an outline of his martial arts, and it's a summary of each of the other books. The water chapter discusses principles of swordsmanship. The fire chapter addresses matters of large-scale victory, uh, large-scale uh, battle, as well as victory and defeat. The wind chapter focuses on the other martial arts of his day and their various styles. And then finally, the void chapter is written as sort of a gateway to meditative enlightenment. Now, this progression. <coughs> from the specific and the earthly to universal and ephemeral is representative of the Buddhist journey from attachment to worldly things towards the ultimate enlightenment of non-attachment. The Book of Void in particular is an expression of Buddhist thought because the void or nothingness is a Buddhist term for the illusionary nature of worldly things. The concepts that Musashi expresses in the final chapter of his last work resonate with this Buddhist way of thinking. The opening lines of the final chapter are a perfect example. By knowing things that exist, you can know that which does not exist. That is the void. This is a reflection of the Buddhist belief that all things are in fact one, and that if we can know one thing well, we can understand all things. But rather than being an ending to the Book of Five Rings, this chapter encourages the reader to return to the earlier chapters, to attempt to apply the understanding of the Book of the Void to all of the previous lessons. This creates a cycle of growth and understanding that, as Musashi saw it, would lead towards a deeper enlightenment. Musashi's final chapter urges his students to learn how to strip away all that is not essential in order to find what he believed to be the true way, not just in the martial arts, but in all aspects of life. This concept was in keeping with Musashi's understanding and belief in the principles of Zen Buddhism. Zen was at its heart a movement within Buddhism to attempt to remove unnecessary complications and dogmatic strictures. <coughs> So too did Musashi wish to strip away unnecessary complications from the practice of the martial arts. He had a lot of disdain for the, for the schools of the, the time that taught fixed stances and complicated forms. His goal was to reduce the martial arts to their essentials, which he defined very simply. The true way of swordsmanship is to fight with your opponent and win. Now that might seem obvious at first glance. He is a warrior and he was trying to train other warriors. But it's important to keep in mind that a lot of other teachers of his day 
regarded Zen as primarily a useful way to teach a professional warrior to accept the possibility of death because the commonly held notion at the time was that it was a samurai's duty to die for his lord. Musashi actually opposed this mode of thinking. He believed that it was a warrior's duty to face his enemies on the field of battle and to defeat them. And the Book of Five Rings is his attempt to teach others to do exactly that. But in doing so, he created more than just an instruction manual for violence. He, in his effort to instruct others in the practice of his martial arts, he created a work of literary art that gives us a glimpse today into the spiritual and psychological beliefs of the samurai warriors of his time. Thank you. Are there any questions?